Well, it would happen if I put that on there too. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Dead Air Live. Live right here on the Dead Air Full Spectrum channel. Also simulcasting on KGRA db.com kgra on youtube and on facebook my name is george lopez uh, with me as always mr ken de costa uh, chris fleming our guest going to be joining us uh, in just a few minutes here after he finishes his uh, almond butter and jelly sandwich which uh, again we, we're going to talk about how this man lives uh, and uh, lives prosperously the uh, the time has passed for ken and i and yet uh, chris looks like he's still that spring chicken we both hate him so we'll be getting to that topic as well uh, how are things with you, Ken? Oh, just peachy. Uh, right now in the office, my faux studio, I'm staring at about 20 boxes stacked up almost to the ceiling. We're in the process of a move. So we've all been there. So anybody listening tonight, I know you feel my pain. So I spent a beautiful day. Beautiful. First day of spring here in Rhode Island, 60 degrees. Yeah. And I was locked up boxing stuff away. So, you know, wonderful. Yeah. Well, I took a breath. I guess I'm ready to go tonight. Yeah. The uh, same situation here. We, we had 60s sunshine, gorgeous here in Florida. And, um, you know, I was doing in home projects and, uh, I did wash my car out there, so I enjoyed some of the weather, but it was a laborious enjoyment. But it was still, nonetheless, it was it was nice to see a change in this weather. However, and there will be a point in time after we bring our guest on that I will leave the two of you exclusively on camera, Ken, as I have to go and get more Kleenex. Um, I got walloped. Uh, you guys remember last week with the uh, with the head bandage and everything else like that because uh, Bike Week was just brutal that um the next day after the show uh, i got walloped and i thought no 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 not COVID again turned out that all you northerners who came down in your harley davidson's and your hondas uh left a very very determined virus with almost everybody in 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 this town uh, everybody got sick um it was uh everything from it, it, like allergies almost in a sense you had the runny nose the sneezing the coughing the headaches all that stuff and uh the, the big day was tuesday that was the toughest one uh and then it slowly uh, dissipated and, you need uh, some b12 dude start buying it by the bulk no it's 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 northerners it has nothing to do with my health regimen you know macaroni and cheese taken in the right context uh will will really do wonderful you, you have you, know. you have your shopping down there at Publix, right? Which is a petri dish for that type of stuff. No, Walmart is a petri dish. Publix, on the other hand, is just that close. If Church had a shopping center, it would be Publix. Just so you guys are aware, of what it's like down here in the south. Yeah. Right. How's everybody else yeah. doing in the chat? Though I hope you guys uh, survived this whole week and uh, wherever you are. I know there was some snow in some areas, so I'm I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are doing well now and. Uh, just sit back and relax as we get into discussions and topics over the next two hours. And uh, I do have things that I want to discuss with uh, our guest also. So uh, let's, let's bring him on. Ken, do you want to do the intros and the honors? I sure will. And I'll give him the buildup he deserves because we're so happy to have him back. Uh, Chris Fleming is an internationally known paranormal investigator, medium, and spiritual consultant who has been investigating the supernatural since his childhood. For over 45 years, Chris has been using his sixth sense to read people, predict events, and communicate with the afterlife. He also consults clients, creates spirit art, we're going to get into that a little bit, and offers ghost hunting equipment online while investigating sensitive haunting cases involving families or children in fear of their own psychic abilities. Chris has appeared on or hosted paranormal shows like Three Seasons of Dead Famous, which is to this day a personal favorite of mine. Two Seasons of Psychic Kids, Children of the Paranormal, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, Ghost Adventures Aftershocks, Paranormal Challenge, and recently, Help My House is Haunted for UK TV. So, without further ado, you want to talk to him, we want to talk to him. Mr. Chris Fleming, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, hey. George. Hi, Ken. How are you? 
We're doing well, my friend. How are you? Good. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you for being here. So what have you been up to? I think the last time we spoke, you'll have to refresh my memory. I think we were within the grasp of COVID or maybe before. It's been a while. I'm not sure. I think uh, we jumped on because George and I talked that some of the prophecies I had spoken about were coming to pass, which was the riots. Yes. Black Lives Matters, police and stuff we were seeing, uh, you know, when Trump was president. Five dollar gas. And well, <laughs> we talked we talked about that back during the Dave Schrader events in 2012 and 11. Yeah. And I just talked to Dave earlier today. I said, Dave, we're at that almost at that five dollar average gas that I said when gas hits five dollars, everybody prepare for war. Yeah. And um, stuff that's going on with Ukraine and Russia is kind of scary. <laughs> oh my goodness, we're going to talk a little bit about. A lot of things tonight that have to do with what the world is going through tonight yeah. and yesterday and tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And uh, don't forget, guys, that are just joining us, first time visitors particularly, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, don't forget the reminder bell and the thumbs up. That's important to smash. Uh, lets us know uh, how you guys are enjoying the content of what we are <laughs> dealing with. Um, so yeah, as you know, we were talking just pre-show here, uh, don't get jealous guys. You know, it's not that we have this extra privilege time with our guests prior to the show start that we really enjoy ourselves, but you know, we get to let our hair down, so to speak. And metaphorically, we, uh, we were talking to, uh, Chris, uh, once again about the list of accolades over the years that you have been within the paranormal, the shows that you've been on and, and that, uh, you know, I, I've had numbers for so many of the different, uh, TV paranormal investigators that, uh, I've never called them cause I figured that they get harassed like crazy. And, uh, if you could share it, Chris, you told an interesting story about what happened with regards to Zach, uh, mm -hmm. while you were doing some of their episodes mm -hmm. and, and how this can be a little bit of a quagmire after a while. Please tell us that story. Yeah. The thing is, it's just, you know, giving all your personal information out. Cause then you got people calling you middle of the night, calling you all the time when you're in the middle of important things, and then just asking you questions that. It's just really common sense. It's really just to get your attention. So I remember uh, Aaron, you know, had a, was getting all these messages and showing me because he would never respond to my texts. And, and I know Zach was getting upset, too, because he was getting calls all the time and his text messages were going off when he was in the middle of conversations or texting somebody else. So it can get frustrating, you know, because we're we're trying to do other stuff here. And when you're getting bombarded, like I got a friend of mine, you know, it's a good friend of mine. I actually got to know him 10 years ago because he started buying uh, ghost equipment from me and we became like best friends, right? He has this habit and I try to tell him, he has this habit of texting. Instead of texting a paragraph, he'll text one or two lines just so I get bing, 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 <laughs> bing. Oh, yeah. And it's just all one paragraph. And I'm like, dude, he says, well, I use the, you know, the, the Siri stuff and everything. And I said, yeah, we'll just complete your entire sand sensor paragraph instead of sending me all these bits and pieces of text. I'm on the phone or something. You know, it gets really annoying because you're trying to have this uh, consciousness of, of listening to the person you're talking to and conversing. And if you get text messages going off constantly, or your phone blowing mm -hmm. up, you lose your train of thought. And it's just I feel it's disrespectful to the person you're talking to because you can't give them your undivided attention. So I just tell people, hey, man, I'm on the phone, you know, or I just shut it off or just don't give out my number. <laughs> it's like, there's yeah, other ways to or, get hold of me. Or you're getting it in bits and pieces. And as you go to respond here comes another one. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, well, I, I even hate the notifications that pop up at the top of the phone when you're typing stuff or doing something. And then you go to press to do something next. And the notification then pops up and brings up a whole new screen. And I'm like, Oh my God. You know, so I got to adjust the notifications to be somewhere on my phone. It's, you know, I think we're in a world where there's too much information and too much accessibility that it's distracting from everyday work. Like I set a timer on my phone for how much I'm on social media now. So when it hits an hour and 15 minutes, boom, it lets me know like, Hey, you spent enough time. Oh, on that's smart. Media. That's smart. So, discipline, discipline good. yourself. Yeah. Well, Guardrails. I, like I was, it. I was on four hours a day, some days, six, seriously. What? No, I'm serious. I, I would look at the data and I'd be like, Oh my God. There goes all my productivity. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I wasn't that way till TikTok came about. No, I'm on that damn thing. Oh, I haven't jumped on there yet. No. Oh, don't, don't, don't. It, no. I like Twitter. It, Twitter and Instagram are my favorite. Facebook, I'm not on too much anymore. No. 
Uh, but thank goodness that's uh, at least you check your messages there because that's where you responded to me. Yeah. Um, and I use this all the time. And I think I brought it up last time you were on the show, too. But how funny it was when uh, I was first trying to get you on dead air back when we were still just doing it uh, as phone calls and uh, I'm messaging you, messaging you, messaging you. And you finally responded. I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. I'm harassing you. You go, no, squeaky wheel gets the grease, dude. It works. <laughs> yeah, it well, I've, it just, I've been so busy. Yeah, repetition. Yeah. Yeah. And I appreciate sure. you, you know, you know, giving me time to get things straightened out before I can. Yeah. I'd be more than happy to come on the show and, uh, and the rest is history. Um, so, you know, again, thank you for coming back. Uh, there is a lot of different topics that we want to get into from sure. the, your years on the shows uh, to what, uh, what it means to be a, a psychic medium in today because there's a lot of things that people want to address specifically because of the loss of life uh, since the pandemic to uh, the things that are happening in the world today, the uneasiness, the the difference, the change in vibration. So uh, we're, we're going to get into all those. And for those of you that are in chat, we'll open up the phone lines in the second hour. So if you guys have questions for our guests tonight, also you're more than welcome to do so. Um, and if you'd like, if it's easier guys, I'll put Chris's, personal home phone number in the chat just don't yeah. call them at odd hours that's just important get but, to that <laughs> yeah Actually, God, give us an update though how are you doing man everything um, you look great you look well, in uh in good i tell spirit. you it's been it, well I, I try to portray that but uh you know oh, honestly well, we it's been a rough, it, yeah. it was a rough year yeah, a, yeah relationship breakup last year that was just mm. you know and it's funny i saw it coming and you know, sometimes you don't want to listen to yourself. It's like, I even brought it up in the relationship, like three, four weeks after we started dating, I said, it hit me. And I'm like, I turned to her and I said, you know what? You're going to, you're going to break up with me. You're going to crush me. And you're going to start seeing something. You're going to be, cause you're seeing someone else. She's like, why would you say that? What? She goes, oh, it's exactly what happened. And with the person I mentioned it, but you know, you live Maybe and learn, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, what's funny is, uh, What's not funny is, but uh, the last month I've been taking care of my mom. I uh, moved her into assisted living uh, last week, yeah, we and uh, we've been wanting to do that because the house. My stepdad died during COVID, October 2020. Uh, my mom, we kept her there as long as we could, uh, but she kept falling all the time and going to emergency. And it's like this. And the doctor's like, she can't be alone. We tried to stretch it out as long yeah. as we could because she's stubborn. She goes, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to be in this house. And so uh, finally moved her in uh, to assisted living. Luckily, my sister came in. You know, I moved all the furniture over. There were some movers and sister uh -huh. helped me. Thank God my sister came in for a weekend last weekend and we got everything done, got her in. I just finished up the house last week. So it's now in the market. Um, and then during that time, my cat was collapsing 14 to 20 times a day. And, uh, and I was like, what the hell? So I took him to three different vets, uh, traveled all the way up to Wisconsin, two hours away took him to the University of Wisconsin Medicine. We find out that the heart uh, is pausing um, 10 seconds or greater 14 times a day, several times four to seven. Wow. Uh, don't know exactly what's causing it, but uh, seems <clears throat> seems like the medication that I put him on was supposed to work three to five days, but took about a week. And it seems like it's working. He's not collapsing. I haven't noticed him collapse since last Tuesday. How so, uh, well, he's 15 years old. You know, but I've had all, I've had five cats before him. They've all lived 17 to 21 years. And my mom's cat lived to 25. So as long as you take care of them, give them love, sure. they're around for a long time. You know, so that's, that's been amazing. consuming me the past two weeks is my mom and, and this cat. Ken, uh, I, I got to turn it over to you here in a second, but I want to respond to that, Chris. The parallels uh, are almost uh, too scary uh, in a sense. We, uh, we lost mom four years ago. Uh, yeah. this last january uh dad's been staying with me he has had a couple of falls including one where he broke uh his uh, arm and two ribs uh he recovered wow. like an athlete the speed of an athlete which was wonderful uh he had a cat which uh, lived to 23 and couldn't even walk anymore so we had to put that cat down we got an identical cat except female so now she runs the place and um and you know we've not gotten to the point in time of dad having to be looking at assisted living kind of a scenario but that it's just some of the parallels are spooky this is wow amazing. that's crazy yeah you understand yeah. and it's tough. every i put everything on hold you know i started dating these other girls and i just stopped i said i'm sorry i, I gotta put my priority towards this because uh you know it's it just you know they've been with me a long time my mom family first you know so that's just the way it is um yeah and they uh 
they, I mean, in the same situation there too is, you know, and then those that are in the chat have been with us for a long time. You already know. I, I actually made a, a statement about that. Ken could contest to this where I said, guys, priority one right now is my dad. As a matter of fact, a couple of people who invited me to go do paranormal investigating, I'm like, I wish I could, but all that's going to be put on the shelf. Dad is my number one priority yeah, right now. Yeah, exactly. Family comes first, you know. Exactly. And I, I'm grateful for that. I mean, I went through the same thing with my dad after my stepmom died and taking care of my dad for a while. And, uh, you know, and he, he makes contact with me all the time. And, you know, and it's like, you know, that it's pay, you know, it's, it's, you, you do that for the people you love and you get that appreciation, respect from them on the other side. And then when your time comes, there's a big celebration because you did That's all that work for him. You showed love. It's, it's love, you know, and I, I gotta tell you this too, is for all the people that got pets is, um, I've had five cats before this and uh, three of them I've had paranormal experiences with after they died, which was, I needed and it helped me heal to the breathing process. Um, one of them has come through a couple times and I just did ayahuasca about a month and a half ago. I went and traveled with a friend. We went and did ayahuasca and uh, I came in contact with not only my, my dad was there the very first night. I mean, he showed up cause I was having a bad experience with it and all these angels appeared. And then all of a sudden I see my cats and I'm like, Oh my God. I mean, I, for like, five seconds, all the cats I had were there. And I'm like, holy cow, it was a crazy. So it was a great experience. But what I want to say is when I brought him to the vet a couple of weeks ago for the initial thing, what happened, and I recorded a lot of the videos of him collapsing. I caught on my cameras, in my house, sent it to them so they could review. Um, as I was about to walk out with him, there was a couple that had just put their dog down and, and they were just in hysterics and they walked out and they were pacing back and forth crying and I walked out and I got in my car. I was going to drive away and the voice says, no, go talk to him. So I went up to him and I started crying with them because I had been through it five times with my other cats. I had to put to sleep. And I told him, I said, Hey, listen, I, I, I promise you, you know, you, your dog is on the other side. It's going to be there when you pass, but here's something you can do. It's okay to cry. And the big, tough guy, big bodybuilder guys. Like I said, Hey, cry all you want, man. You're showing love. You're showing how much you love them. Don't yeah. who cares about anybody else. It's an expression. Yeah. And that's a gift. Don't hold it in. It'll eat you alive. Let it all out. Continue to let it out. But do this. Tell that your dog you love it so much that you want to sign it's okay so that yeah. you can get on with your life and that you'll see it again. Just tell your dog that. Do a little prayer and say, give me a sign that you're okay so I can continue to love you, but I can get on with my life and do what I need to do until I see you again. Exactly. And then just wait for the next several days and you should get a message. And you know, both him and his wife were like, thank you so much. And I got back in my car. I said, okay, God, now I know why you told me to get up there and say something, mm -hmm. you know? So it's a gift that we can give other people based on experiences we have, whether they believe you or not, or criticize <coughs> it, who cares? Just give them that gift. Tell them your story yeah, real quickly. Put it, put it into the world. man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That is amazing. That is amazing. You, you don't know this person, do you, Chris, by any chance? Uh, this is Jason Howes' daughter, Satori. You know. I, I've, I I may have met them a long time ago, uh, but I don't know them. We don't communicate. I mean, I saw Jason in Vegas uh, when I was out there for one of the events. But I don't, you know, I don't know his kids. Yeah, she, well, you're going to uh, see a lot more of her because we're going to play a clip later on. George doesn't know this, but I've put a little oh. something... I've put a little something together. I talked to her and Cody today, but more on that later. You know, something I want to say real quick is uh, when sure. I was at the vet uh, a couple weeks ago. We're trying to figure out what's going on. They, they weighed him and he was six pounds less than last time I brought him in. I said, when did I bring him in? You know, and it was about a year and a half, two years ago. And I said, what did I bring him in for? They said, well, you noticed his breathing was off and you thought maybe there was an issue with his heart. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I actually remember that. And they could not find anything wrong with him. So I took him to a VSE, a specialty clinic that cost me $4,000. Crazy how much they charge. <laughs> yes. And uh, they didn't find anything. But then the uh, they said, you know, we want to put a halter monitor on him. The cardiologist said he didn't find anything. We put a halter monitor. And the halter monitor showed the data of him collapsing. And it was the heart. And I'm like, oh, my God. A year and a half ago, I bring him in thinking there's a problem with his heart. Everybody tells me he's fine. And this is what ends up happening to us. Was that a precognition or did I know that something back then was starting mm. to happen? I don't know. You know, don't know. Yeah. Don't know. It's just it creepy is. how there's a correlation to that. You know, I'm not a vet, but here I was saying, you know, you need to check his heart. You need, there's something with his breathing. And when a heart stops, he stops breathing, which is why he collapses. So it's just, it's crazy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ken, I'm going to leave you with Chris because I need to get that Kleenex. I'll be back shortly uh, in just a little while so I can uh, join back in on this, my friend. So glad to have you here.
Thank you. Alrighty. All right. So we're off and running here, Chris. Um, our guest tonight, you'll be watching Dead Air. Our guest tonight, Chris Fleming. Uh, as George mentioned, second half of the show, we'll open up some phone lines, maybe throw you, uh, give you an opportunity to talk to Chris a little bit. We'll also take some of your questions and we'll get to them as well. But Chris, what I wanted to talk to you about tonight was collective consciousness mm -hmm. a little bit. There's okay. a lot going on in the world, and we all know what that is, the uh, power of intention, the power of prayer, power of reasoning. And you're actually the first person I've asked this to. And, um, <clears throat> you know, at the age I'm at, I've seen a lot of things in my life. You know, I've seen presidents come and go. I've seen assassinations. I've seen civil rights movement. I've seen riots. I've seen students shot at Kent State back when I was a kid. Um, so there are a lot of things that I see that are kind of, well, it's happened before we got through it. But honestly, I've never seen anything like the tribalism and the division mm -hmm. between people that I see right now. And I'm yeah. curious because you and folks like you, you operate on a certain vibrational plane where mm -hmm. If you're empathic, you take this in. And we all see the images on our television. We see what's going on in the Ukraine. We see what's going on with innocent people. But I really wanted to ask you on sort of like a different level, how this is affecting you, how you see this, and just basically what effect must this have on you? Um, first, we're we're really screwed up right now. And let me explain yeah. why. What I'm saying by screwed up, that's just my opinion, okay? It really doesn't hold anything unless we took take a look from a fourth or fifth dimensional perspective. So let me back up. 2006, when I was in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I went with Pamela Heath, and uh, I was a parapsychologist and two other psychics. We went and traveled to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and met with Lynn Buchanan. Lynn Buchanan came into the remote viewing right after the Stargate program, once it went classified um, with the United States military. And he worked with them and he came in right after Joe McGonagall and some of the other Edward Dames and some of the other top remote viewers. Um, after years being with military stuff like that, he retired and then he teaches controlled remote viewing and still does stuff for corporations as well as for the government okay. regarding that. So we trained with him for about three days. Um, during that time, he had mentioned stuff that unfortunately my intelligence, my consciousness was not aware of yet because I hadn't had those experiences. And one particular statement he stated was that remote viewers in the program, the 70s, 80s, and even back in 2000s, when they had tried to remote view past 2012, there was issues. He said that every remote viewer that went past 2012 was seeing a different future. Some saw nothing and others saw different timelines and different futures. What did this mean? They said, well, something happens around that time period that causes alternate realities, uh, quantum levels to just completely branch off. And I didn't quite understand that at the time, but let's just fast forward and take a look at between 2012 until present, all the stuff that's going on, but especially in the last three years, 2000, mm -hmm. you know, even when Trump became president and everything, the one thing is I had seen a timeline where, uh, Hillary won as president. And during that timeline, we went to war with Russia. There was a world war. And I saw it was like, oh my God, I do not want to be on that timeline. I remember I prayed, I do not want to be on that timeline. Do not want to be on the timeline. Somehow consciously, I, when I remember waking up and I saw when Trump won, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I'm on a different timeline. So that means everything that I grew up thinking was going to happen in the future has now changed. What does that mean? So there are alternate timelines that we are on. And I didn't understand it, but if you want to Read about it in the gateway analysis and look at quantum physics with the double slit experiment. What happens to electrons? It'll take you down that road. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Science will explain it for you. So what's happening now, which is really scary, is I think that there are certain people in power that do understand this, how certain truths or untruths or disinformation can really impact us more now than ever. We saw that with alternative facts. What the hell is an alternative fact? I know. Disinformation. People need to go watch the great hack. And the great hack was when Cambridge Analytical did some marketing and they helped shift the election 
And in doing so, they create a lot of propaganda stuff around Hillary Clinton. I'm not going to get political. I, I don't like any of our presidents or any of the politicians because I believe they're out for themselves and, and lining their pockets. I'll leave it at that. Well, my concern is how it's affecting the collective. Okay. Because what they found from Cambridge Analytical, they helped sway the election. Well, this was huge. Not only is this huge, if you go to look at the art of war and propaganda that Nazis used and everything was using psychological manipulation to control people before you even have an act of war. Well, we saw this not only in various campaigns, we saw this in 2020 with Black Lives Matter, with all these other things and disinformation that was being strewn to us to start tearing us apart, choosing what sides, Democrat, Republican, and stuff like that. Instead of, yes. it, but we've never had this type of uh, separation ever, I think, you know, since I've been alive. I don't, I, that's my on. whole point. I, I, I have never seen it to the degree that we're what, seeing it right this now. This is what caused it. Is this? It's the art of war is to separate people, okay, before mm -hmm. you take over. And what's interesting is I'm looking at my timeline here, the various prophecies I had. 2019, I remember I was going up my hallway and I got this poster of these soldiers and stuff and, and an angel. All of a sudden it hits me and I had this uh, prophecy that says armies are building for the destruction of America. And I said, stop. I said, what? The destruction of America? I said, yes. They said on both sides. I said, what do you mean both sides? West Coast and East Coast? I said, no. In the physical plane and the spiritual plane, meaning that demonic entities and angels are building themselves up for a big war. But also military is too for the destruction of America. Well, if you watch the great hack and understand Cambridge Olympic, what they did to shift our election, then you look at how Russia was influenced. You look at what's going on with Ukraine and you look at how some people are supporting Russia and some people aren't supporting Russia. Some people are supporting mm -hmm. Ukraine. Some people aren't. Some people now completely hate Democrats and said they'd rather be communists than be Democrats and this and Republicans and left, right. Oh, my God. It's like, right. shut the hell up. Guys, we're human beings. We all live in the same country, but United States of America is now becoming divided. Well, this is all part of the art of war. Because Russia, Iran, and other countries saw what happened with Cambridge Analytical, how it swayed the election, that they started using that to experiment with in 2019, 2020. How do, uh, what do I mean by this? Well, I saw this firsthand, and I spoke about it in my social media. You can go do searches on my Twitter and Facebook, and you'll find me talking about it on video. You'll see my posts. I remember during some of these riots in Chicago that all of a sudden Facebook, someone puts up that there's gangs and people that are breaking into the Brookfield Zoo and stealing the animals. I'm like, what? I was ready to get in my car and go down there. And then there's a picture of some guy with a monkey. Well, the picture was from like 1917 or whatever. People didn't really look and, and, and search on that photo. But all this fake stuff was being put up. So I followed who was posting this. I went to their Facebook page. All the followers they had were from Russia. So what was happening was Russia. And then I find out that Iran... And Russia have created these centers of computer hackers and individuals that were going out there creating fake profiles all over social media, Facebook and Twitter, and posting fake stuff or partial truths right. to confuse us and freak us out. And I warned about this. And then the FBI came out and started talking about this. That's the first act of war to separate a country before their destruction. During that time, 2016, 2017, Russia and China, you can go search this, it's, it's out there, signed an agreement to start doing war drills, military drills together. In 2017, I believe, was the first year that they actually did naval and then air force drills. Mm -hmm. I said, what is Russia and China doing, doing these military drills? <clears throat> then all of a sudden, North Korea does drills with them back in 2019 or 2020. I said, they're doing these drills because they're preparing for a war. I know people in the military that told me that no war just happens. It's pre-planned years in advance. They're preparing for a war, the destruction of America. First, get to them internally, mentally, to get them to separate, Democrats, Republicans, this, that, which we've been doing. And then once they're for, people are for Russia right now, people are against Russia right now. It's like, oh, my God. you know. And then they're using that, and they'll use conspiracies and propaganda to separate us even further, to vindicate what they're doing. That is what social media is being used against us. We have to be smart, smart enough to sift through that. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is affecting the collective. 
this is what Lynn Buchanan was seeing, that there's these alternate realities, these alternate facts, and this people believe this and they stick to this, people believe this, stick to this. Well, what happens is that impacts your life, your family. We've seen family members that have broken up because of certain elections because they just all believe different things. We've seen relationships break up because of different beliefs, because of these alternate facts and stuff like that. So it's affecting family, relationships, affecting jobs, political decisions, everything. What happens to your path and your destiny when you're on a specific timeline of why you're here? Now you're being affected from outside sources and how you believe and make your choices and decisions? That affects your life. So what happens is our lives are all branching off in different directions, creating alternate timelines. What happens is, too, is the collective now is being fragmented. When it's fragmented, what happens to our reality? Well, we're going to see worse disasters, earthquakes, tornadoes, stuff like that, because the collective consciousness is what holds this planet together and the universe. Right. Now, when it's being separated into alternate relatives of thought and beliefs, it'll greatly impact our environments yeah. and it'll you greatly get, impact each other. It's synchronatic element. Uh, every, everything and everybody is intrinsically tied. Now, <clears throat> what I will say to that is that and i've espoused this and felt this way for a while now is that the burden of thinking and rational thought is off of us now mm -hmm. and we've put it in other people's hands yeah. um back in the day something would happen it was reported you got whatever information you needed to if you wanted to dive into it and eventually you came to a conclusion an individual right. conclusion free will free thought what we see now is whether it's a network whether it's on social media as soon as something happens eight people appear to tell you exactly how you should feel about this and depending on what your narrative is mm. yeah that's the can, thing you can control go, the narrative they're trying to control the narrative you can go to a source that supports your narrative and that's how you're going to go yeah but what I see more and more is we are being told what to think. Right. And they're taking that, I use the term, you know, as a wise guy, but they're taking the burden of thinking and rational thought off of us, where you begin to get into this group think yep. type of thing. My two friends send me videos almost daily on Telegram, Instagram, and even text messages because they follow these dark web type conspiracies and everything. And they're trying to say, look, you know, here they're bombing in Ukraine because there's human trafficking. There's these bio labs. Yeah, there are bio labs. CDC has bio labs too. It's for pathogens. Doesn't yeah, mean they're, they're trying created to by Russia actually. And someone, someone says we were going to release yeah. birds in Russia with all these toxins and, and stuff to kill mm -hmm. them. Oh, come on people. It's, some of the stuff is crazy. Some, but the thing is, is they will take partial truths. Yes, there are labs in every part of the country in different worlds, uh, different countries, but then they attach some conspiracy to it and then it just gets its own legs and right. it takes off. Now, the problem with that is people will use videos or clips or stuff to try to support it. Like we've seen a lot of fake photographs of, of soldiers of this and that in Ukraine. You find out their photos from years ago of other stuff. Yeah. So the thing is, is, you don't know what's truthful unless you really do the research, but not everybody has time to do that. So they try to tackle your emotions to find out what really bothers you, what really do you hate and they'll take that and add that to that to really get you to not think straight and just follow what's going on i mean listen i studied psychology i was just a couple credits from getting my degree but mm. things happen i know to look past that and also listen to my intuition and be smart and unfortunately i'm like god you know i remember when i studied philosophy in college and i wrote a paper on nostradamus prophecies and he was saying you know world war three you know is going to be started by greed and by fear. Now, every war has certain aspects of greed and fear, but we're seeing right now, well, you know, Trump had uh, funding from Russia for the banking systems and China and got permits from China. Um, Biden's got stuff in Ukraine and other countries. They made millions, billions of dollars. We had uh, Bush that had in Cheney, the stuff with the oil fields in Iraq. You know, these, these political people make money from all these other countries. Right. The problem with that is that you take your morals and that you're here to serve the, the people, but then you're being offered billions, millions, or even trillions of dollars. You're going to take the money because 
it, it's your livelihood and your family and everything else like that. Not that you should is what I'm trying to say, but whatever happened to serving the people and leading all that out. But what we're seeing now is all politicians are making money from other countries and what they're doing. Is it wrong? Well, it's wrong when there could be propaganda or things going on. That's not really happening, but you're using that to protect your assets. It's supposed to be for the people. And, and the people here is that of people suffering from COVID, a lot of people lost their jobs, businesses closed. You know, I know I was suffering too, you know, I couldn't go out and speak and stuff like that. That, that, that to have these corporations make all this money and everything profit off of it, it's not right. And the thing is, is that that's greed. Greed and then fear of inducing fear with disinformation, alternative facts, and this and that, point the finger at other people for something that you're doing, which is a great yeah. tactic that we see with politicians. Blame All the other the guy for something you're doing. Right. That's what mobsters used to do and everybody else. Well, I didn't do it. He did it. Yeah. I'll blame the he, other. If, and gangs do that too. They'll blame it on other gangs, false right. flags, and this and that. To and get what them they don't trouble. realize is if someone has less institutional power than you, they're right. probably not the source of your problems. Right. It's the but the thing is, that's are, fear. Right. It's using fear against us and COVID too and everything. So we got the greed and the fear that is an all-time high. And then we got this thing going on with Ukraine and Russia and everything. And look, God only knows what's going to happen this year because that is what could bring us into a war mm -hmm. is these, these mistruths and stuff. You know, like people don't realize World War II, you know, Nazi Germany flew over Poland and dropped flyers that Nostradamus said that Germany would take over Poland. And they also put some false information on there that other countries surrendered. Well, they didn't have the type of social media we have to do where news travels like that. And they read that and they just surrendered. And they allowed them to come right in. It worked. Well, oh, yeah. now because stuff travels like that and someone shares it and then the next thing you know, within an hour, you have millions of people reading it. It can affect a population so quickly. They're now using it in the art of war. So World War III has started and it's starting yeah. with the social media. Yeah, the, the question is, how system. far is it going to go? Is there going to be a physical battle? That's the thing that's just scary. Are we going to get to that point? Yeah, it, it's kind of amazing because I always thought, bringing it back around to the paranormal field, I always thought that, <clears throat> I mean, people are people. We're imperfect creatures. Everybody has their thing just because yeah, of course, of course. you're involved in the paranormal doesn't make it better or worse than anybody else. But right. I always thought that it was kind of an oasis in a way because so many people espouse love and light and helping others. This is the, the reason for their existence in this field. And what's been disappointing, and this, in, this includes people that I've known for years, either casually or virtually or personally, mm -hmm. that I have heard from people in the paranormal field who espouse love and light and healing energy, come out on social media and say the most vile and hurtful things. And it's just, sometimes it's just been mind blowing. Right. I mean, when I, I've we got screenshots to, of people saying stuff like that. <laughs> wow, baby. I, <laughs> like, it, later, it's, I'm like, it blew my mind. It's yeah. like, have we reached that point now? Where even in this field, like I say, we're people like everybody else, and everyone's entitled to their politic, religion, their right. wh whatever. You're entitled to that. But do we get down to the point where, yeah, I'm going to go help somebody, and then I pull into their driveway and I see they have a Biden Harris or a Trump Pence bumper sticker? I I turn around and leave because I'm not going to deal no, with those people, no, or no. Yeah. or um, I give less than my best effort or less than my my best professional behavior uh, because our politics don't line up. And unfortunately, I see a lot of that now. I really do. And um, I think it's made me a little bit cynical, personally. And again, these are people that, uh, you know, I thought the world of always respected. And I'm just kind of like, wow, who are you? Right. <laughs> I mean, so it's disappointing in a way. And in another way, it's like, yeah, it's it's reached. It's reached everyone, no matter what your vocation or right. 
what your belief system and well, we're just and you guys, putting it I'm, back in the world. I'm sure you guys talked about in the past the Q thing that was going on. You know, everybody was following this Q thing where everybody's talking, Q did another drop, this and that. And that was part of the disinformation. And if you watch Q into the storm and HBO, it'll blow your mind. If you watch the, the whole series all the way to the end, that's who Q was. They share with you who Q was, which is just, just uh, Code Monkey. He was this computer hacker programmer, and, that's and him and his him and his dad, and that's what it was. And what they did is because they were gaining momentum, you had personnel and politicians contact them and work with them to establish it even further. And then we had the storming of the Capitol, January six, and then of course they disappear, right? And it's just like, oh crap, you know, it went a little too far. That just shows you that people can get because they want to believe in something. They want to feel that their their yeah. life has meaning or identity. Yeah, I, I I I still it, it boggles my mind, and and maybe it's just how certain people are wired. I'm right now. I'm watching um, this show on Netflix called Bad Vegan, and it's trending right now. On I want to see that. I saw a clip for it. Yeah, it, it's mind boggling, but it. it Basically, Chris, it comes down to what we have been seeing in politics. But here's this guy that manipulates this very successful lady. And at the end of it all, basically just controls her world. And mm -hmm. it's all manipulation, master manipulation, lies, terror, threats, anything you could think of. And she just she succumbs to his will. And, you know, we could go talk about David Koresh, you know, and, and those people out there who look at themselves as a messiah and people follow them. And and it to me, it's mind boggling. I sit there and go, do you not have the wherewithal to stand on your own? Right. But then we think about it, you know, and some of the people in chat have been talking about and also avoiding the topic of religion, how people will be that sheep looking for that shepherd in a sense and just blindly follow in a lot of these circumstances. And, you know, since the point of existentialism, everybody should constantly question everything. What is yeah, the purpose behind absolutely. this? And what is the goodness of it and what is not? You know, am I putting money into this televangelist pocket so he has five mansions and he's got his own private jets? Or am I doing it for the sanctity of my soul when I when I pass and go to heaven? Yeah, and and it just it all seems to be so muddled right now. And then I think it's the peer pressure of well, I don't want to leave this because I don't want to be ridiculed by everybody else. I, I, to me, it still escapes me from the aspect of logic, and right. I don't know whether or not I'm the weird one out in that circumstance. And you know, it it, it is it's something that blows yeah. your mind. Yeah, I do want to say hi to Satori. I know she had comment on here saying hi, Chris. And for some reason, I'm trying to establish comments in the chat room. It's not popping up. Uh, yeah, you're so in the private chat. Uh, can you find the comments all the way up top? I can't remember. Ken. Yeah. Can we? Yeah, but it's not showing for me to type in anywhere. On yeah, here. as as a guest, you can't respond. Yeah. Okay. So hi, Satori. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Just want to let her know that I did see her message. Yeah. We just. Um, I mean. I mean to finish like. George, I mean, we live in a cult of personality now. Right. Yeah. People take. Well, I lost power. some friendships over no. this too. Yeah, I, lost I mean, some they, you know, they, right. we're they, talking about social media, Ken, but we're talking about those people who followed Hitler. We're talking yes. about people who followed yeah. other leaders. A cult of personality. Yeah, and long and before social media. In a lot, in a large way, they do the same thing. They create fictional characters in their own mind that's not who these people are not who you want them to be you who you wish them to be who you hope they would be they represent something and you end up creating fictional characters right well we that's could also talk about are. the flat earth theory which has <clears throat> kind of grown popularity as well and <laughs> yeah. i have two friends that completely believe that the earth is flat uh, that it's flat it's not a globe and round and they try to discuss this with i'm like come on man <laughs> you know, here's the thing that I'm going to say is like, how do I know? You know, when I was in seventh grade, I had an out of body experience. I shot out of my body and I was in space and I turned around, and I saw the earth, which was a globe. And uh, I shot back into my body. So because of that, I know the earth is round and they say, yeah, but oh yeah, it's round, know, but it's flat. How know, yeah. How do you know it was a globe and not just a circle, dude, like a, like a saucer plate. Because <laughs> I, it's three dimensional. There's a perspective Pizza. that I saw and I saw it rotating. It's like, you know, so anyway, we're not going to get into that, it's, it, but I just want to say that there's just, and plus when you look at a creator, a creator, you know, from my personal social, uh, spiritual experiences too, there's so many other life forms that the creator created. 
okay. other dimensions, planets, you know, universes, multiverse, and even stuff layered over than we have in these alternate realities that the creator is experiencing all possibilities, not just us, but man wants to feel that they're the only one and special. We are special, mm -hmm. but we're not the only ones out there, man. And it's like, so think about how amazing and beautiful that is. So the creator just keeps creating, yeah. you know, we keep creating. No. The, the, the interesting part of it though, Chris, is that over centuries and centuries, uh, the technology has changed, but truthfully, we are just as manipulated uh, as we have been, um, for, you know, for the Roman times, we have yeah. not changed whatsoever as a right. species. We've not evolved to, come on man we're just not and 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 that's a terrifying thing and that and maybe more so because there is more access to us now than it used to be that it's easier and quicker to manipulate large groups of people and and that's that's terrifying maybe you know maybe it is time for anarchy who knows we have to wait and see uh, or we just ask Chris if he can psychically tell us that's an important part of it too uh oh uh, here we know. go <laughs> i don't know everything oh but... no We've got a new guest. Hello. Hello. <laughs> this, this is Noel. This is my one cat. Noel. Hey, Noel. Touch, touch the wrong button. Don't they do that? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> you couldn't ask for anything better than that. That's fantastic. Our very special guest, uh, who will be coming back in a second. The uh, Chris is, is there she with Noel. Nice I'm on the wrong but I told that was, you. That, you, that was. That was. Boom. She does it. Not the red Perfect button, timing. Noel. You just launched, Noel. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> For those that don't know, my cat just stepped over my laptop and completely disconnected me from this interview, and I was yes, able to get uh, right back on. Took you out, man. <laughs> took you out. She wants attention. She's like, no, pay attention to me. Every cat does that. It doesn't right. matter. Every cat right, right there. You could be working. Here. Forget about it. Um, but you know, again, you know, we, we I want to transfer this back a little bit, and we sure. got a, about ten minutes yeah. before we go to break, uh, Chris. Uh, transfer back to the paranormal part of it, um, and and those <laughs> circles of people that you have common dialogue and common uh, rapport with, with regards to psychic mediums, is there this rumbling with within the paranormal community and those that you share your thoughts and and ideas with that say. You know, we're 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 on a precipice. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be an inevitability. It's going to happen. Or will it just be, okay, this will fizzle out and then this new thing, social media wise, will you know, news wise, will pop up and distract from this one over here. You know, and again, it is it's almost like a magic trick what social media does to us now. But do you guys collectively feel that there is an end game here, what we're experiencing? You know, I, I haven't really talked with other psychics about this. Um, a couple of years ago, I did. Yeah. Um, it's just something just we haven't really talked about. You know, hey, what are you getting for the future? This and that. I know I spoke to Chip about a year or two ago with some things that were going on with all the riots and stuff. How's he doing? Uh, he's doing good. He's doing yeah. good, you know, and he's he had the health scare and everything and had to watch himself, you know, so he didn't get COVID. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if he's – I just talked to Amy, actually, Bruni, today. Um I'm I think Chip is out with them investigating now, or is he still doing it from remotely from his computer? I'm not sure. But uh yeah. I've sent him messages, nothing back, but again, no surprise. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sure he gets a lot of messages all the time. Yeah, but no, I haven't really had a chance. I mean, there's other psychics I know that, you know, they're not on TV and stuff like that. We we've shared some things about what's you know what's coming. Um but you know, for right now, what do I think? So I'm worried about, I told you, I'm worried about this war, this world war, because when I was doing the Ouija board, uh, what was it? Uh, back in the seventies, you know, when we were speaking of the spirits in my house. My mom got me involved and then my, my best friends, blue and Brian, we used to do the Ouija board all the time. And there was one session I was doing the Ouija board. I asked about, you know, world war, uh, will there be another world war? Cause we were studying it in, you know, a consumer ed class in, in grade school. And they said, yeah, there's going to be a world war. I said, when's it going to happen? They said, it's going to happen between the years of 2017, 2000. It was either 22 or 23 or maybe 24, but it was 2017 to 2022. And I said, you know, when, when it's 1977 and they're telling you that and you're a kid, that's like so far away. It's like sci-fi, right? That's so far away. So I'm like, well, what am I going to be doing? Where am I? He says, you'll be in Europe. I said, oh. 
I'm in Europe because it spells out Europe. I said, what am I going to do in Europe? Am I going to be in the military? Am I going to be fighting? He says, no, no. What am I going to do? He says, you're going to be talking to us. He says, talking to us. I go, talking to you? I'm going to have a Ouija board in Europe? He said, no, you'll be talking to us. <laughs> well, here's the crazy thing. When I got hired to do Help My House is Haunted, 2017, they flew me out to Europe to talk to spirits. 2018, we didn't film. 2007, 2019, I'm out in Europe talking to spirits. 2020, I'm out in Europe, Scotland, talking to spirits. 2021, I'm in Scotland talking to spirits. Now, I told Barry Guy, I told Jane, some of my other production members, I said, guys, 50% of this prophecy is happening right now. It's being fulfilled. I'm in Europe talking to spirits. The other 50% is a war. And Barry remembers this from the very first season, 2017. I said, Barry, I'm just letting you know, we got to pray we don't have a war from now to like 22, 23, because they got 50% right that I never thought I'd be out in Europe doing this when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. And God, God willing that they, they do uh, avoid that or we do avoid that. Till Hopefully that it was an alternative right? fact. Yeah. <laughs> they took the part truth. Me being out there and they added on the war. <laughs> in your writings, in your visions, though, Chris, is there a, a, a flip uh, of that coin? Is there another side where there's a utopia? Do we have a point in time where there will be peace? Yeah, in heaven. But not here on earth. Listen, I can only tell you from my experience, and I hate to be that guy, but growing up as a kid, I used to tell my mom, I saw myself older going through the streets and there was a great war told my mom that growing up as a kid. Okay. Um, you know, I was fearful of the election with Clinton, you know, sending us to war with Russia and jumped into some new timeline. But I said, there is going to be war. It's just going to happen later now. And now I'm still in that between 2017, 22, 23 period where I hope we get past it. I hope it's wrong. I really do. I want to be wrong, you know, and I hope that I've jumped into some other reality to where it's not going to happen. You know, that's my goal. But I tell you, what was the year? I'm trying to remember when we had that big explosion, that flash that was in Asia or China or somewhere, that big explosion. Do you remember that? And someone caught it on video. You know, I see this explosion. People are filming it from their apartment. And all of a sudden it yeah, got it was really in, big. Uh, it was in Turkey. Okay. okay. Two days before that, I remember laying in bed. I said, God, how's it all going to end? You know, what, how, what, what's next? What's happening next? And then all of a sudden, boom, I see this flash and then it just completely surrounds me and I'm, I'm gone. So... Then two days later, that explosion happened. So I wondered, was it that, that, but I said, what was the question? How does it all end? So is there going to be a nuclear war or here's the thing we got to pay attention to is 2029 astronomers have stated that there's going to be some, this asteroid or meteor, I forget what they're calling it. That is going to be the closest to earth that we've ever had of any other meteor or asteroid. And so when Trump was talking about space force, I said, you know what? I think this guy knows. I think they're preparing to do something in case this asteroid or comet gets too close to Earth to have a force out there to try to, you know, bounce it off, destroy it or whatever. And then you have all these movies start popping up, you know, don't look up. And this, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, so we have this. And then you look at Revelations with Wormwood and everything else is we have 2029 to worry about. Hopefully that our, you know, the, the world will gather together and just shoot it out of the sky with these lasers and stuff like that and not have to worry about it in case it gets too close. But if that hit the planet, there would be this big bright light explosion and that would it. So I'm wondering that little vision that I had, what is it related to? Or is it just that, you know, when I go into the light, when I die, but that was not the experience because I was conscious, I was alive, and this light just engulfed me, and then I was gone. Because I want to know, how am I going to die? How's it going to end? You know, and boom, I saw that. Yeah. So I don't want to be a fear monger or anything, and I hope, pray to God, I'm completely wrong, just misinterpreted it. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we don't want to do that and then say pleasant dreams everybody tonight. No, no. But, but the, there's the thing. Been, we are eternal there, souls, okay? Sure. We are eternal beings regardless of what happens, okay? <laughs> I could spend, we could spend two hours talking about the three times I almost died that I changed the outcome. All right. I was shown I was going to die. I talked to my friends about it and the event happens, but because I rehearsed it, I made a different decision to go down a different path and avoid it. So I realized I'm not supposed to be here. I watched a rabbit race across the street, get hit by a car and was dead. And I sat there going, my God, you never know at one moment you can just, just drop from live. a heart attack. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just live and yeah. enjoy what you have because you're eternal anyway. And you have no and you're control. Go to the other side. Yes. 
So no control. the fear, everything else is it's good to be educated. Like, okay, I've got this timeline or what should I do now to live my life to the fullest, make the best of who I am with others and just do that because you're eternal. There is exactly. no such thing as death, only a transition. That's All I can say, Chris, is screw the almond butter. Get that horrible <laughs> peanut butter. Just go to town. Yeah, I ate pizza. a whole pizza last night, man. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> to myself. Ken- Ken, you said there. You said there's a little teaser of something that we're going to show on the second hour. We're also going to open up the phone lines here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, and, and I want to let everybody know as well, since we're talking about uh, Europe and uh, our international stretch here in the paranormal. Uh, next week, Barry Fitzgerald's going to be joining us here Barry. on the show. So it'll be a great, uh, great conversation, great time with him. Also, uh, Ken, give a little teaser. You got uh, about a minute here for uh, this clip that you're talking about that i'm curious about you didn't even tell me you bastard and we ken froze up there for a second which tends to happen you know especially in new england you you're you're completely frozen up right now ken i don't know if you have to drop off and drop back in there he is okay no, go ahead. Ken. we all went off at the same time That's uh right. what i want to do is i want to run something by chris this is something that has happened to me on two occasions now um in the company of uh, Cody and Satori. Um, I will discuss when we come back a little bit about what they have found or maybe more appropriately what has found them that we both feel is a game changer in this field and uh, get your thoughts on it. We have a clip that's about two minutes long, if you don't mind. Uh, no, not at all. Please. That we're going to show it to you. So I didn't want to have a guest in and show pictures of my vacation or anything like that. But um, I <laughs> want to get your thoughts on this because there is a bigger question that I would like to ask you if you've had a similar experience or your thoughts on it. So okay, how's that, that for a teaser? Yeah, so stick with us, guys. We're going to go to a break right now. We'll be back just on the other side. You are watching Dead Air Live. How'd you get this number? Hey, Ken. Hey, man, it's George. Hey, man, what are you doing? Right now, I'm trying to chop ice off of my deck here before somebody breaks their neck. What are you doing today? Me? Oh, you know, ghost hunting. Hey, listen, Bill from KGRE wants us to do a commercial, a promo for the show for them to play. Got any ideas? I don't know, man. I don't know if I want to film a commercial or something like that. Well, hey, why don't we just do a montage or something, like clips from the show and just call it a day. Okay, yeah. Just put a bunch of highlighted parts of the show. Not a problem. I'll take care of that. Listen, have a great day. I'm almost done here. Yeah, all right, man. Let me know how you make out, all right? Yeah, you bet. Be good. I'm okay. Tony, I love you. I love you too. Yeah, you know what? That's why I hate when I say all the people in the Northeast are so rude. I'm like, you, I'm down here and I'm being nice. And everybody's like, you know, 
not, not even a wave. I'm like, you're not going to get the coronavirus from waving at somebody. A little close up view. That's nice. Check this out. Hello. Hang on, let's get us on camera again so we can wave. Wave back, Robert. Yeah, if you wait. Robert, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing some time, inviting us into your home. I co-authored a book with Andrew Perrin, if anybody was not aware yeah, no, of that. No, no, no one is aware of that. No one, and I've never been to the Conjuring House. Yeah. I wrote a book. We're going to do this again. With Andrew Perrin. And I've still never been to the farmhouse. Did I mention I, I wrote a book with Andrea? I wanted to, you know, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's over my shoulder there, you know. And I've never we been. Took, we, we took a two-week absence from this. And I've now never. we're back with <laughs> to the Conjuring House. Dude, I, I, I'm hiding, man. It's over. Oh, I'm sorry. It's uh... <laughs> What's going on? I love that blanket. I'm having blanket envy. <laughs> I, I know you are right now, right? <laughs> yes. Sometimes I move it around with my body. It's like Ouija meets Twister. <laughs> In the middle of the night, I contact spirits just by rolling around on it naked. Watch Dead Air on KGRADB.com Sundays from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And also, don't forget to check out KGRA YouTube and KGRA on Facebook for all the amazing shows, guests, and topics. Did, 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 did I mention that I wrote a book with Andrea Perrin? You know what sucks about as you get older? I sat what through sucks? the entire break perfectly fine, and now I got to pee. I, you know, it's just geez, unpredictable. Uh, you um, know, it depends. Depends. Welcome see back. What, see what I did there? Yeah, it depends. You know. Welcome back, everybody, to Dead Air Live on the Dead Air Full Spectrum channel here on YouTube. Also simulcasting with KGRADB.com, KGRA on YouTube and on Facebook. Don't forget also to check out the KGRA app. Uh, you guys can uh, listen to our show as well as many of the other shows. Speaking of shows, uh, Ken, uh, do a little promo uh, while we wait for our guest, Chris, to come back with regards to the two shows that are also uh, related to uh, our YouTube channel. So go ahead. Yeah, tomorrow night on Monday Night Monsters on Dead Air Full Spectrum, Ron and Chris are going to get into the <laughs> legends and the true story of Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. So we've covered the Wolfman. We've covered cryptid animals tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern on Dead Air Full Spectrum. Uh, Ron Murphy and Christopher Rondina, a little bit on Frankenstein tomorrow night. So should be interesting. And I'll be there <laughs> lurking somewhere backstage. God help you all. God help you all. Uh, and it's funny, again, Ken and I work uh, with the this, this synchronization of two siblings, in a sense, because he put in the private chat there. He goes, yeah, let's let's bring up the topic about Monday. And I'm like, I didn't even read that till just now while you're doing the promo for Monday. Well, you had to pee, so. No, we had this little thing going on here, so. Uh, <laughs> hey, welcome and, back. And oh. give us, subscribe, Dead Air Full Spectrum. Subscribe. Yeah. Please. We're on a membership drive here. And that's it. We we are always looking to see you know who wants to be part of our exclusive family. So you yes. guys make sure you check it out. Let's bring our wonderful guest back in, psychic medium, author, lecturer, Chris Fleming. Welcome back, sir. Hey, How are here's you? Chris Fleming. Hey guys, I got my cup of coffee. <laughs> good. Amen to you, good, brother. Good, mm. good, good, good. That's what I should have done on the break. Get another love one. coffee. I want you to absolutely focus on the experience. Ask them to show. Hey, what just happened there? What was that, George? All right, Bill, stay away. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, if we got time, maybe we can go back and I'll show you that. But yeah, somebody clicked on that accidentally. That it tends to happen. But 
Um, we've got a lot to cover in this second uh, hour, Shoot. and uh, before Ken, you're I show put me up the, right? the line, yeah. Yeah. let's get to, let's get to that first. Ken, go ahead. Okay, so here's uh, here's the story. Here, a couple of young people, Tori Hodge, Cody mm -hmm. Ray, Desbian. Uh, we've been on investigations with them for the last four or five months, and in November last year, they asked on a particular investigation at a Masonic hall if they could try something. And I said, yeah, of course, sure. So they came to the middle of the floor and they made physical contact with each other, grabbing each other's forearms. And immediately the floor started knocking. Hmm. I said, okay. So they disengaged and it instantaneously stopped. They held each other again. The floor starts tapping. Now I get up. And I walk over to where they are and these taps start moving away from me and do like a 180 degree circle to the other side of them. And I'm like, what's going on here? So apparently this is something back in 2018 that they discovered would have happened. There was some type of connection they have. So we put cameras up. We've literally had someone stand in between them. And this happens. It almost is like walking in the room. We've literally had spirits take us and show us things at a house. We're talking to people literally from 200 years ago. Where was your room? And these taps lead us to that room. Mm -hmm. It's remarkable, Chris. I have never seen anything like this. We have tested it and they welcome that. And... <clears throat> The stories I could tell you since we've been doing this are just mind-blowing. But in this particular instance, and this has happened to me twice, where I was thinking of someone, and I didn't mention the name, that was, you know, attached to that particular place. And I said, you know, I'm not going to mention who I want to eventually contact or whatever here i'm just going to keep it to myself for now so what they do is literally run through the alphabet and they make a deal with a spirit and it's the old tap once for yes twice for no deal and um they'll run through the alphabet when they get to the letter they will spell out a name or a okay. word or a date of death or a surviving family member or literally tell us, this is how I see, I go to a light. It's like a beacon that they create when they make physical contact. And we've had conversations that go into, this used to be the color of this room in 1760. And it's remarkable stuff. But I wanted to especially talk to you about what I think is this telepathic thing. Mm -hmm. where a spirit has come across and said, Ken is thinking of this. And I have told no one what I'm thinking of or mm -hmm. what I'm reading on my phone, which is another story. But here's a clip. It's about two minutes long. And I want to get your take on this, number one, and the idea of telepathic communication okay. with spirits. So okay. here we go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, K. A, B, C, D, E, K. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, N, O, P. Q, R, S, T, T. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, E. A. A B C D E F G H H A B C D E F G H I I this think A B C D E F G H I J K L M N think think Thinking, 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 A, A, B, B, about, Ken thinking about, 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, N, A, B, C, D, E. Me? Can't think about not thinking me. about me. Who is this? Is this someone we talked to before? No. You okay? Go with this? All right, somebody's coming through. Um, I do know. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, L, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. Louise. Louise? Oh, Louise. Yeah. From here, right? I said, okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So that's me in the back freaking out. Yeah. Because there was a particular resident of this house that I found out had passed away there at the age of 19 years old. Was named, her name was Louise Whipple at this particular place. Okay. How and long I, how long ago? How long did she pass? Yeah, how long ago did she pass? Uh, 18, oh, there you go. Okay. Don't say 66. All right. Okay. And no, this don't, don't, don't say anything else. Okay. okay. This was what, as soon as you started playing this, I knew exactly what was going on, what I was feeling coming from the room, just from the visual. Okay. It's not non-local communication. Okay. What I'm performing right now is non-local communication. Okay. Ken, spiritual, um, spiritualist movement, late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah. One of the forms of communication was tapping. Yes. This spirit used to communicate with other mediums and other people back then when the spiritualist movement was going on so their preferred method of contact is tapping which was used in the spiritualist movement of course you had the chairs on the side and there was a lot of fake stuff that went on as well sure one of the things was knocking and tapping it was performed all the time and this is something we did in my house growing up we had the lights flicker and sometimes we have knocks two for yes one for no two knocks one yes okay this is tapping which was a lot more simpler because everything was wood we didn't have like plastics and stuff as much as we have today so wood tend to be a great conduit for, you know, tapping. They like natural things more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So this spirit was used to over a hundred years ago. Okay. Communicating through tapping. And that's why it's using tapping. So your next question needs to be is like, is this what you used to do back then? And it'll tell you, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have done this on earth, grass, concrete, rugs. It, Whatever. Usually natural elements or, or fibers or whatever from natural elements yeah. used to be the best it's, because it's you know. it's an amazing thing. And this happened just recently, maybe three weeks ago at another place where I'm looking at a phone, getting information on this particular location we're at. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I skip through and I see this woman's name, Elizabeth Wilson. And Elizabeth Wilson shows up. Yes, they say I haunt this room, you know, and goes and she gives like she was the head housekeeper. She gives all that information. When we're done, I'm still on my phone and I realize that I've been reading a story about haunted hotels. I have passed the one we're in and I'm literally at the Stanley Hotel in Colorado. We're in Massachusetts. And this woman, Elizabeth Wilson, who was attached to the Stanley Hotel, comes through and communicates. Mm -hmm. And the same thing, Ken thinking of Elizabeth Wilson was what mm -hmm. they tapped out. And the idea of the, of the, the, the confluence of two things, Chris, mm -hmm. that obviously there's communication here. Right. The other thing is like, you're picking up my thoughts yeah, and what I'm thinking. It's like, I mean, that's something it's new. For, it's new for me. <laughs> something just yelled out in my house. I don't know if you guys heard that. Um, for me, it's not, it's, it's a form of non-local communication. I mean, when you talk about consciousness, okay. Mm -hmm. Now we do know of thought transference and what happens is as human beings, you know, we tend to think that our brain is the conduit for thought and thought just stays within our brain. It's not true at all. Parapsychology is the study of thoughts outside of the brain, energy outside of the brain. What we do know in communicating with spirits is that they exist within the ether. 
Okay. And the ether, which, you know, some people argue there's no such thing as ether. Well, there is, I don't care what you say. You can show whatever you want and I'll show you that it does exist. Mm -hmm. The ether, which we call the electromagnetic field, but there's a vast more amount of it than just the electromagnetic field. There's many planes of existence within that ether. The ether is just this invisible thread that's connected everything. You look at entanglement, you look at spooky distance, the Elaine aspect experiment, all particles in the universe are connected. How are they connected? They're connected by this ether. The ether has no drag. It just exists. Okay. It's like a software program, three-dimensional 3D image. When you create a 3D sculpture, you have this, this uh, design that you build upon. Okay. Well, this build upon is the entire universe and it creates and vibrates the frequencies of what we see, the reality, physicality. This ether is there. It's created from the creator. It was sent out through the universe and everything exists and uh, manifests from that. Now we also hold it together through collective consciousness. So there is this consciousness, this infinite intelligence that Einstein and also Tesla talked about. We're talking about Nikola Tesla, not uh, Elon Musk, that talked about that there's this infinite intelligence that's holding it all together while it's holding together through what we call the ether. All right. Now spirits, when they're no longer in the physical body, they're no longer in the physical body. Okay. So what are they? They're pure consciousness. So if they're pure consciousness, it's easy to receive and send consciousness, thoughts, because that's all they are. Now, you look at, I've studied near-death experience for only 35 years because I've had my own. And in every case, they talk about where they're communicating with Jesus or communicating with angels or loved ones through telepathy, right? Because they don't, they don't need to use the mouth, vocal cords, I mean, you're all energy. You're just, it's thought transference. There's communication that just goes through thought. Everything is known through thought on the other side. So because ghosts and spirits, they know what you're thinking. Like I tell people when we go to a place, I go, be careful what you're thinking because they know what you're thinking. And we've done experiments like, what am I thinking? And they say through the spirit box exactly what we're thinking. Even the obelisk would sometimes pick up words of exactly what we're thinking. So we know that. But we have on recording, spirits are saying stuff about something I was thinking about the day before. I said, what are you guys reading my mind from the day before? I said, yeah, it's easy. It's called reception. Yeah. So we know what you're thinking. It's reception, receiving. So, Ken... They know what you're thinking, okay? So you can ask a question, and other investigators out there, you can experiment with this and use yeah. ITC or something else to, to get the results. Write a question down or even just think of a question over and over again in your head and ask them to respond and watch the results, you know? It's interesting. That's great, great experiment for the next time next friday actually we're going to do this one of the things <clears throat> that i think that i've ascertained from this or i believe because interestingly enough everyone in our group has had a family member come through saying the most intimate things um it's almost like this opens up and whoever just wants to show up comes through whether it's my mom or someone else's dad um everybody from our group has had this kind of experience where suddenly i mean we're contacting people that had something to do some connection in this location all of a sudden my mom shows up mm -hmm. or like i say somebody's dad someone's brother and it's almost i believe that it, there's a sense of community on the other side because they talk about little kids running around making a ruckus Mm -hmm. And an interesting thing, one location we went to, they described a woman that numerous people who work here have seen. So immediately my mind goes to, okay, it's residual. There's no acknowledgement. It just passes. In asking someone there that we were communicating with, do you know about this woman? And he said, yeah, I do. She doesn't talk to anybody, hmm. which immediately says is this intelligent, acknowledging spirit on the other side also describing a residual yeah. type of thing that's going on? Because he's aware of this woman, but in his parlance from 1913 or whenever, yeah, she doesn't talk to anybody. So it's like, wow, is he also experiencing something residual and is aware of it? I mean... Man, we're just scratching the surface on No, that. That, some spirits are aware of what residual there is. But there's one thing I had written down when I was watching the video. I want to say this. Now, I've never met Cody uh, Satori. They're brother and sister. Is that correct? No. Okay. They're, they're a couple. They're a couple. Okay. Well, all right. I would ask, do you guys know anyone that does past life regression? So that's um, legitimate. I mean, there's some past life regression therapists yeah. that are really bad. But, I want... 
Cody and Satori to both get a past life regression. I want you guys to document this because they were brother and sister in another life. Okay. Oh, that would be interesting. During that that life, they had spirit communication. Now, whether they were part of the spiritualist movement, whether they were part of something else, I don't know. But they had made some type of vow, whatever it was in another life, that they would, you know, do stuff together in another life and this and that. And what I believe is that their communication, which they had established in a previous life, is allowing them to have this contact connection that brought them together for one another, but also this contact with other spirits going from that time period because they were alive during that time period. So to validate this, I would suggest getting a past life regression, documenting it on video, um, having a list of questions before you go, but take a look at where they connected in a previous life and then to, for them to discuss that previous part of their soul. That's It's recorded. It's in their subconscious. It'll come out and they'll describe the life they had. Also, there was an agreement. Ask them, what was the agreement they made in that life regarding spirit communication in the afterlife? And were they communicating with spirits during the spiritualist movement? Were they doing seances, this and that? Because when they were doing this, I saw them going back to that time period, doing these forms of communication. But I, the whole time I watched this, I thought they were brother and sister. So they were probably brother and sister in that life. All right. Now to validate this, get a past life regression. It'll be great for them to understand the relationship has been, um, you know, consistent from other lifetimes, just in different ways. Yeah, that's fascinating stuff. Yeah, especially since yeah. Uh, Satori and Cody are in a relationship. So, you know, that incest, guys, I don't know. No, no, it, but it's, but understand that. Listen, my, my mother, was my, my sister in another life. I yeah. met a, I've met two girls in this life that I was married to in another life and it didn't work out in this life. Okay. And, and I was shown and it, it's just incredible, you know? So you have like one, one, one of my best friends, he killed me. He was a Spaniard in life. He slaughtered me and my family. Okay. And there was always something about him. As soon as we met, he wanted to kill me. The first time we met in this life, we got in this fight. But then all of a sudden, I saved him in this life from something. And it was like where it's like, holy cow, you know? You can be complete enemies in another life. And then in another life, you resolve that because you have multiple lives. So please understand, it's, it's you get those different opportunities to experience different things. Right. It's not a uh, it's not a social uh, linkage kind of a thing. It's a soul linkage kind of a thing. It could yes, be a, but in another a, a life, they were communicating with spirits, and I believe it was during the spiritualist <laughs> movement. And but I believe they also made agreement to each other that if one passed away before the other, that they would communicate. And then when they both were together, they came back, and that's why they have that connection when they're touching or whatever is because they established that in another life, yeah. the spirit communication. Now in this life, they're using it to communicate, you know, effectively with other spirits. I, I, I'm telling you, I know this. <laughs> it's like, and, and just to validate it for themselves, so they know, oh my God, what, what he said was was accurate. And they might discover some other stuff related to. Mm-hmm. Have you had a sitting before or been in the presence at, at, where something like this has gone on? I'm going to assume you have. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've thousands of people that I've, yeah. I've done readings for and done stuff, and I've done myself 20, 30 regressions as well as witnessed it. You know, and we've had certain things happen where some of us all picked up on the same thing. You know, everybody's on different frequencies, you know. Mm. So it's, 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 but some people are on the same frequencies. And when they're on, that's what's really cool. Well, I want to follow up on that too. And, and, and uh, before we do that, you guys are seeing the numbers scrolling across the bottom of the screen 855 472 5483 or 85 KGRA live. If you guys uh, have a question or just want to speak to our guest, uh, Chris Fleming, uh, dial in that number and Bill will be on the other side of the line to pick you guys up. So um, let, let, let's stay in that mind uh, thought for a second here with regards to some of your history of working again with children uh, who mm-hmm. have these type of skills um, because there's so more of an open conduit. And that's what I tend to use the terminology for coding Satori that they're conduits. But uh, when you get these children that are just first discovering their abilities or capabilities. Okay, um, I got a story for you. Is there sometimes, other than the way that I can explain it, a missing part of that person? In other words, is there always this uh, duality? There's, There's somebody there with them that maybe they haven't discovered yet. Maybe they never will in this lifetime. But there. Is there a one-two link that tends to happen, or can there be those individuals alone as well? 
Well, individuals sometimes go alone and find their soulmate or don't have that other person that's there with them, or sometimes they die earlier and they're separated, you know, but you were kind of talking about two different things. One was the children. I want to yeah. share this story because I haven't told this thing publicly yet. A uh, relationship that I was in for about almost uh, 10, 11 months. Um, when I first went out with her for lunch, it was just as friends because we had met each other many years back and she was younger than me. Um, but during that time, she was with somebody and she, she had a child and the child was about three years old. So we went out to lunch and I got to meet her child. And we were just going out, you know, as friends. But her child's sitting to the left and we're sitting outside. And there's a parking lot there and, and she's sitting to the right. And I meet her child. I said, oh, she's an adorable child and everything. And all of a sudden I see this angel in the parking lot. And I look up and I see this angel. Like, what the hell's an angel appearing? She turns and looks and she looks back at her meal. She looks back and I'm like, I said, Demi, what do you see? She looks at me. I said, do you see angel? She was like, yes. Her eyes are like, how'd you, you see the angel too? And I'm like, yes. I'm like, oh my God. And I look at the girl and I said, you know, your daughter's seeing what I'm seeing. Your daughter has abilities, you know? And what's weird is uh, I had dreams years before that, that I saw this child on the other side that I was going to meet. And I always thought it was going to be my child, you know, and it still might be, I'm not sure. But then all of a sudden, as you know, I spent more and more time with her, her child and I bonded very quickly. And she would end up in some of my dreams and I would be in some of her dreams. We'd be talking with all these spirit guides and everything like that. And so when the relationship ended, you know, because of her, um, not the child, that was the hardest thing for me is because I had a bond with this child that I knew was from a spiritual level. And this child would recognize and see things that brought her to my house once she was, oh, who's the little boy upstairs? I'm like, oh my God, she sees the little boy, which I've caught on the EVP. And, um, she goes, he just ran upstairs and I never told we never told her anything. So this child had an ability, sixth sense, but also I had a dream. She told me. And then when I had seen the child about two months, I went and sat down. I go, Demi, you were in my dream this week. She's like, I know. I go, what did you tell me? And she tells me what she told me. So there was this connection. Why? You know, it's like, I don't know what the whole thing was, but when I was doing ayahuasca, they told me it was all about this child, you connecting with the child and the child was teaching you something. And the child did teach me something and, and that's it. Maybe that's at the end of it, but I have a feeling in the future that there's going to be some type of connection with this child again in the future where I'm helping this child when she's older. So I'm just leaving that out there for the universe to decide when that's, that's necessary. Mm -hmm. So there's many different things with, with children is where they have these experiences. People have come to me with my child seeing stuff and this and that. So I'll walk them through it or I'll talk to the child on the phone. The worst thing you can do is just ignore it. Like I've got a friend right now, her, her daughter's 11 years old and says that she's terrified something's coming out of the closet and she was held down one night by this force. So I'm looking to go over there to see exactly what's going on. But this happened to her when she was a child too. So it's something that has been following them for periods of time. Understood. While we have a uh, chance here, we're going to cut away real quick. <laughs> George, okay, dude. Um, Take a couple of questions for Chris. Jeff Hilton writes in, Chris, have you ever walked away from an investigation because of how it was being handled? Yeah, I was uh, filming a show in the UK and uh, I didn't like the way they were handling it because what I knew was there didn't fit the narrative. And so I walked away. Yeah. Yeah. I was pissed because we're there to help people and I was really pissed off. So I said, you know, F the narrative, I said, sometimes what we get and what we sense is not fitting the narrative. And so I walked away from that particular investigation. I mean, it came back later and uh, we, we figured it out and worked it out. But my, my biggest pet peeve is that, unfortunately, um, some people try to stick to a narrative. Now, I've had places I've gone to investigate, even homes, and I've argued with the owner. They're like, you know, you can't cross all these spirits over and this and that. And this is what goes on here. We know it goes on here. I said, well, yeah, but it's actually this. And they want to keep that narrative to make money. You know, that's the toughest piece as people just don't want to let go of some of these things. Mm -hmm. And um, it's at this point now where I'm, I'm in my life. I'm very fortunate. The show that I just I just filmed uh, in Scotland, we butted heads in the beginning, but I called out some people on stuff that the spirits were telling me and they're like, Oh my God, you know, let's just let Chris do his thing. Right. Yeah. And Probably. then, and it was funny. And I'm just going to say this is, 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 it's kind of funny is we were using the Frank spot. It was kind of like the Frank's box. And I was using a Ouija board and this and that, but I wanted to have ITC and the ITC was saying exactly what the Ouija board was saying. 
Okay. Right. Cause I said, cause people think you're going to be pushing it, but the director interrupted us while I was, there was a pause between the spirit communication. The director interrupted us and then right through the ITC says, F off the person's name, the director's name, told him to F off. He's like, he turns and walks away. Okay. I'm not saying another word. And then it says, and then it says director. And it said it in that sarcastic thing, like no leave kidding. Chris and the other person alone to talk to us. Don't butt out. And I've been trying to tell him for a while. And I just said, Oh my God. He's like, all right, I'm not saying anything. I'm not gonna mm. say anything. So the thing is, is like, I hate getting interrupted when I'm in the middle of spirit communication. Luckily, as time went on, we got used to working together because they'd never done paranormal before. The communication we had was fantastic and they were wonderful to work with. And I was so mm. grateful that they accepted the way you need to document and film and just let it happen, right? That they weren't, you know, forcing because they were trying to force a narrative because the network wants it. And that's the thing is the networks want mm -hmm. these, these narratives. It's like, listen, I'm going to go in there and get what I get. All right. And that's it. And I'll tell you whether it is there or not and what I am coming in contact with. It may not fit your narrative, but that's what I'm going to do. And right. that's always what I'm going to do. So I have walked away at times, whether it's been at an event and someone's telling me this, or it's been filming where I walk away. I said, I'm walking out. No, that's not what, that's not what's here. This is what's here. Can I, can I do what I'm supposed to do? I've been doing this my whole life, you know? Right. So I'm at that point. It's not being egotistic or anything. It's like, listen, I communicate with spirit. I made a vow and a respect when I had my near death experience to come back and to help spirit and to do this. And I'm not going to let anything get in my way. So whether it's TV or anything else, I have to be true and honest to them. But it's also being honest to the viewers, but it's also being honest to the field because we have a lot of people that, what I tell everybody, if you're going to get into the paranormal, what are you going to contribute? If you just want to do it for the research and the study and stuff like that, that's great. But when you get into a certain point where you've been doing it for so long, you have to start contributing, but contribute something that can add to it or take it even further. Right. I want, when, I, when I leave, I want to be known for some things that I contributed. I don't want to be known for being on TV. I want to be known for what I contributed to this field. Yeah. And some of the things I've done on TV have contributed, but that's the whole thing is what can you do to contribute to this field and take the knowledge, the research, the experience, you know, like I was talking to Amy today, Amy's doing these methodologies and everything and she's adding new methods, you know, the S step and stuff like that, that she's added to the field. And that's fantastic. And that's what you do. Like when I was doing with Barry and Jane, help my house is on it, which they're two of the best investigators I've ever worked with. I'm telling you right now, they are the best two investigators I've ever worked with because their intent and their experience and them being prepared and their knowledge. Barry knows the equipment. I work with people that don't know the equipment. Mm -hmm. Jane is always researching all the experiments done by the top parapsychologists throughout paranormal field. And she's always bringing those experiments. And I'm like, my God, their knowledge and their experience is fantastic to work side by side with somebody that, you know, and I miss that because they're so great. So mm -hmm. you're only as good as the people you're with to help contribute so give credit where credit's due. You know, I see other people, they, they create new devices. They say, mine's the best. It's going to be the best out there. I said, well, you wouldn't have that device if it wasn't for the other people that use their hard earned time and money to create other devices that evolved and got right. you to where you are. Cause you're taking other people's devices and making your own based on that. Always compliment and contribute, but, but pay amends to the people that have laid that groundwork. That's how you, because scientists have this problem too, they want to take credit for everything, is give credit where it's due and add to it. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mark and Debbie Constantino. I used to always just record EVP for an hour or two hours and sit there forever to go through it. But, you know, the Mark and Debbie Constantino method was they would record for 20 seconds, ask a question, then play it back. You know, this burst thing. When yeah. I saw them do that burst thing, I said, oh my God, so I do that, you know, but I got it from them. Tell right. me right now. So yeah. that's the thing is you, you know, I can go on and on about that. But. Yeah, I mean, we we take the best of it. You know, right. one of the things before we, you know, come close to getting out of here, I wanted to ask you about crossing over spirits. What are your pr parameters on that? Because, okay. you know, in my experience, um, a lot of times spirits, and, and we do this through the communication we're having, we ask the question, you know, it's like, no, I come to visit. I'm I'm in and out of here. You know, I, I have free will, which is a beautiful thing. Free will, of course. But you know how Sometimes. people, it's like, I want, you know, you to come here and I want this gone. 
okay, well, you can try to get it gone, but it's up to the spirit whether it wants to go or not. Sometimes it'll be forced out, but you don't have the power to force it out. And that's the thing is, listen, I told you guys before about the bridge. When I died, I stopped breathing because of the car accident. And I still sometimes have problems breathing. And I, I would hover above my body. And the one time I was on the other side, I'm like, all right, let's go. This was 2010. And they said, oh, you can't go. We have to show you something. Oh, nothing you can do. Change my mind. I know it's free will. So if I want to go into heaven, I got to go into heaven. You can't change my mind. Oh, we would never try to change your mind. It's up to you. Well, they showed me something. I realized I was being selfish. It's not about me. It's about all these other people I haven't met yet. There's people that are waiting for some type of interaction. Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh my God, it's about them. It's not me. And I bawled. I said, oh, please forgive me. I was so selfish. How could I, these thousands of people say that I'm more important than them? I'm not. They're important. So I said, send me back. And part of that was the souls and spirits that are here that can't cross over because they weren't anointed. They weren't prayed for. Their belief system was they've done something so bad they can never go. But the thing is, if they learn to forgive themselves first, they can be forgiven. So, but the thing is, is I'm not sending them over. They just need someone on this earth plane to recognize them, do prayers for the dead and pray for them. Mm -hmm. it increases the frequency and vibration as well as their consciousness and forgiveness. They start to elevate to another frequency where they're no other in the darkness. And then their loved ones come and the angels come and the angels do it. You know, I'm just the bystander saying, I'm going to help you. When someone says, I sent them over the other side. Okay. How did you do that? If you took them and sent them over, eh, they got their free will. And plus them on the other side have to assist. You're just the mediator. Yeah. So I tell people, which since then it's become my number one priority, even on this other show, I said, listen, I'm going to be doing prayers for the dead. When we're done, I'm going to be sending these spirits over. You want to document it, you can document it, but it's what I did in help. It's what I've done in some other things. I have to do this. That's why I'm here. No problem. They start filming it. Documents part of the show. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. You know, mm -hmm. because it's important for other investigators to realize that. And we go back to me walking away. I went to some places to, you know, events and they said, well, you can't pray for the spirits. I don't want them crossing. I said, well, you know what? I'm going to pray for them. And it's up to them whether they want to go or not. Because then you're caught talking about slavery. You're talking about spiritual slavery where you're holding them here, making them work for you so you can profit. Right. And that's kind of reason why I don't get invited to a lot of events anymore. <laughs> you know, when when you go to a lot of these places and there are public investigations and things like that. Um, see, I've always wondered this. Is it because you someone's afraid of losing them? Because you talked about praying for them. <laughs> you know, it's like, no, no, we, we, we don't want them gone. You know, because you look at <clears throat> whether it's Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. And a lot of people that are doing a lot of videos about ghosts and like my issue, this is me, right? Is I think we become a little desensitized to the idea of who spirits are. They are not here for our entertainment purposes. Correct. Correct. And I think a lot of times people, in order to whatever it is, Chris, you know, attention, clicks, likes, whatever they're going for that 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 brings them some income. I just think that I'm not, I don't know if it's a generational thing. I don't know. But it seems like a lot of people have lost their way with that, is that we don't try to help. We don't think about the spirits. We don't pray for them. We uh, we just want them there so we can do some performance art. Yeah, but that's being selfish. I mean, like the thing is, is I don't care about the likes and this and that. I've got what only twenty thousand followers on Facebook or whatever. You know, mm. other people got like millions or five hundred thousand. You know, whatever. The thing is, I look at it this way: is I'm paying it forward. Um, what I saw with, I mean, when you have thousands of people staring at you and you're in between heaven and here, and they're all looking at you, relying on you, you can't turn your back on them. Regardless that you know, I was going through a tough time here and physicality of what I went through in the car accident. And I didn't want to be here. I said, "Oh my God, it's not about me. It's about them." You know, I have to come back. So I came back and I was constantly reminded of how important that was. I look at it this way. I know that every one of those souls, human and animal, is going to be on the other side celebrating when I come home because I saw this for Father Andrew Calder is I was friends with him. We did some we did some exorcisms together and I was friends with Edie. And the crazy thing was, is I, I was on the phone with her day before he died and then when he had died. And I saw on the other side him being welcomed home, and I was just emotional. I did a drawing of it that I had sent to her as well of what I saw. And I just saw these rows and rows of people and people out of the balcony celebrating like he won the Super Bowl, you know? Mm -hmm. He was coming home, and I'm like, oh, my God, am I going to have something like that? And I just started crying going, you know, what would, you know, what would make you 
you know, on life, receive that type of reward coming home, you know, that love. And it's because of the contributions and the things that you do. And I said, okay, well, I'll never forget when I saw the movie Schindler's List. When I first saw it when it came out, I was at the theater. And at the very end, when he's there and there's the car and he sees all the people hugging him for saving his life, for giving him a job, so they weren't sent to the gas chamber. And I'm bawling. And he says, oh my God, if I would have just saved two more people or five more people or 10 more people. And I walked out and the movie theater was completely dead silent. And it hit me so hard because... You know, years later, I'd be on the other side seeing these people going, if you don't go back, all these people are not going to make it. And I realized I have to go back. So I do. So these spirits are very, there's so much gratitude. We've done ITC when I've done the prayers for the dead. We have, during Help My House is Haunted, I, Jane, I said, Jane, I want you to record this. This is what's going to happen. I see all these miners. There's like 200 miners. They're cheering right now because they know we're going to send them home. She captures on a recorder them cheering. She's like, oh my God, they're cheering. I said, I told you. You know, they, they second guess me. I'm like, guys, if I'm going to tell you something, it's true. Okay. I'm not just saying this for TV or anything like that. What I'm getting is what I'm getting. You can document it and record it. And we will soldiers, thousands of soldiers at Fulford, which is why I got this tattoo. The soldiers are on here. Mm -hmm. Okay. In respect to them, thousands of soldiers. We prayed for them. We got them cheering going, they found us. Yay. We're all going home. So they all went home. Six months later, after that, I remember I'm driving and I see the sun all of a sudden, boom, I see like about a hundred of these soldiers out of the thousand. I see a hundred of them all lining up like Vikings and they got their swords and they start going, doo, 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 and their shields. And I'm seeing this, I stopped my car and I'm seeing this coming right through the sun. And I'm like, what? And there says, you're going to come across, you're going to come in contact with some really evil demonic entities, this and that in the future. We want you to know we're going to be standing right beside you with the angels because, because you were there for us. We will wow. be there for you. So you realize I have no fear because I know that it's not me that can that cast these things out or whatever. I know the angels and I know these other souls will also be there to support. And I want to know when my time comes that I won't be alone, that I will be there with all these people. Right. So the thing is, we are talking about human beings, whether it's a thousand years ago, 500 or 20 years ago. We're talking about human beings that need you to help them. So when you go to a place and they're saying help and this and that, some are trying to trick you. There are some negative spirits that will say that, but you owe it to them. Once you communicate with them to ask if they want prayer, to ask if they want to go home. I've had some spirits say, no, we want to stay. I said, fine, then you can stay. You have that free will, but no, there will always be that time. Just call out and they will come for you to bring you home. That is the greatest gift. It's no different than saving someone's life in this life. You're saving their soul. And whether you believe it or not, I really don't care. Because when your time comes, you can realize, oh my God, he was right. And so I do it for them, not for me, and not for TV, and not for everything else. It says, you can document and listen and watch what I do. That's fine. But I've come to the point in my life, you know, I'm 54 years old, where I've been doing this since I was a child. And I remember when I was a child and these soldiers were coming out of the walls, filled with blood, with no arms and limbs and crying out to me. And I, I was terrified. And I had my mom change the wallpaper. I finally came in contact with them when I was in Gettysburg. I finally came in contact with them in the UK at Fulford. I finally came in contact with them when I was at some of these battlefields in the UK filming. I said, oh my God, you're reaching out to me when I was a child because there's no such thing as time for you. You're still stuck. You realized that I was eventually going to be there and trying to reach out for me when I didn't even know what I was going to be doing. And here I am doing it. And I'm like, holy cow, you weren't there to scare me and terrorize me. You were there trying to reach out because can you save us? But I wasn't an adult yet to be able to do it. So not everybody has this role to play, but I've learned and I've taught like Barry does it now. Barry and Jane do it now, you know, and even Ian Lawman, who's doing help. I said, listen, brother, it's all about the souls. Help them. You know, I'm not there. You help them. You guys do what you can carry the torch for them, be the light for them. And that's what they're doing. And now the new show I'm doing, I, I I'm, I'm doing that in this new show. And it's like, oh, this is great because it's expanding. They're doing it. I'm doing it. And if other people out there start doing it too, it doesn't need to be part of the show. It doesn't need to be part of your investigation, you know, the research or whatever, but it can be at the very end. You can give this offering and guess what? Those souls will be there for you when you need them, when your time comes. I promise you that is the greatest gift. That is your biggest investment within this life if you believe in life after death. Well, I've been talking about <laughs> exactly that for the longest time, but Chris Fleming just articulated that in a way that few people could ever and that's why we have so much respect for you chris and i applaud you 
That's for that. Good. That was beautifully said. And understand, you're sometimes going to have negative entities holding them there that want to keep them in that torment. We ran into that at Gettysburg. I got a video of me getting possessed. You play the audio backwards. Oh, my God. You play it backwards, and they're talking normal. You play it forwards, and there's multiple languages being said. And there was a demon that was holding these soldiers there, allowing them to consistently feel the torment of their legs being blown off, they've been sick, being left on the battlefield. And they're stuck in that mindset because the, the negative entities feed off of that pain and torture. Look at some of the satanic cults. They'll tell you some of the demons tell them they love some of the negativity, love some of the pain and torture. And that's why they did sacrifices many years ago. Not all satan Satanists are like that. You know, they have different right. mindsets, but some of the true Satanists were into the inflicting pain and everything like that. So it carries on into the spiritual realm because the negative entities, if you look at Enoch, Book of Enoch and everything, where spirits are here to try to destroy us, distract us, and to keep us here, not going into the light. You look at near-death experiences, those that have gone to hell. They'll tell you there's no such thing as God. There's no such thing as heaven. They want you to believe that so you can't get there, which we go back to disinformation control of collective consciousness in the physical realm with mm -hmm. our media or politicians or whatever trying to control us which is also affecting us spiritually so we have to yeah. rise above all that yeah we do have if we while we're talking about that we do have let's let's get another question in yep. here george from michelle welker along those lines and maybe you can bring some clarification chris i keep hearing about how we can't cross people over because of free will correct do exorcisms work because demons don't have free will? Well, demons, their main soul is to try to affect our free will, manipulate us. I've dealt with kids that have come to me from their parents or friends because they're cutters. Okay, they cut themselves. And the one thing I ask them, do your voice is telling you to do that? Yeah. Why do you listen to it? Well, because I don't, they think it's their voice. But in most cases, it's these negative entities telling them to do that. When I show them images and I have them do ITC and hear these negative entities telling them to do that, they realize they now have an enemy, not themselves, not their subconscious, not their consciousness. It's these entities. As soon as they confront that, they stop cutting themselves. So the thing is, is that we have this invisible, these invisible entities that are trying to get us to hurt ourselves or distract us. That's affecting our free will. Their free will is just to cause pain, just to cause us to be disrupted and to ruin our lives in any way they possibly can we realize we have this invisible enemy. A lot of different religions and scriptures talk about that. So we have to protect ourselves from that. But what happens is some of these human souls, even though they have free will, they'll be lied to, they'll be forced, they'll be you know, terrorized, and they're afraid to go anywhere else, so they're stuck here. But when you get past that and you tell them, no, I understand what you're going through. I understand you, but you don't have to be that way. You don't have to think about that. We sometimes have to, we had a case at Nuneaton, okay? She's writing a book about it, maybe become a movie, all right? where she was attacked by these two demonic entities. We go in there and we find out once I get rid of the one demonic entity and then we got the last one, there's like two, 300 people or more that are in the mine shafts underneath the house. Spirits that have been stuck there for a long period of time. We said, how long have these spirits been here? They said 1,500 years, it told us wow. on wow. the ITC, clear as day. Even the one that's writing this book, I played the audio for him. He's like, oh my God, you caught that on audio? I said, yes. So this demonic entity was holding them for 1,500 years going back to, you know, BC. So the thing is, is that sometimes they can't. When you look at scripture, it says that angels will come, Jesus will come, whatever, to raise the living and the dead. Who are the dead? The dead are the ones that are still stuck here that either are afraid to go over or are being stuck here or forced to be here. Yeah. Is to bring them back. Okay. Well, we can do that as paranormal investigators by prayer and asking for assistance, being the media and waking them up, awaken now, so that they can choose to go if they want to and just getting the negative stuff out of the way. So you don't always have to do an exorcism to do that because angels will come in and just push them away. And I noticed we were doing ayahuasca. It was crazy is just before the ayahuasca we did. Uh, I forget what it was called. And I was having a bad trip. I was just freaking out. I'm like, Oh my God, I had too much, whatever. And I'm like, my dad appears. And then my biggest fear was, Oh my God, I'm not in control. Negative entities are going to try to get at me. All of a sudden, I see all these angels around everybody. There's 30 of us there, all going through this ritual. 30 angels, I mean, more than 30 angels were around. Every single person looking inward, protecting all of us as negative entity forces were trying to get at us. They were protecting us. And I said, oh my God, so now I can let go and just relax. We are being protected. So when you are in a form of prayer or consciousness trying to help these other souls, angels will come down to protect 
usually north, south, east, west, to protect the perimeters so that they get the choice of free will. And otherwise, negative entities will come and just bring them back into the darkness or trick them. Angel said, hey, no, they have their free will, which is the law of the universe. They have a choice. If they want to go, we're going to be here so you can't influence them. And that's what happens. So it's, it's just remarkable, man. The stuff that goes stuff. on that we don't get to see, but yet yeah. at times I'm able to perceive this. And it, this, it always goes on and it goes on for everybody. Angels will say, we do this for everyone as long as they call upon them. So call upon them. Yeah. And unfortunately, Chris, uh, we don't have free will on this show. Bill tells us we've got three minutes before uh, we've got to turn it over to our uh, next uh, show that's coming up here. But uh, tell everybody if they uh, want to reach out to you, how they can do that. And uh, and within the next couple of minutes, we got about two minutes here. What's coming up for Chris Fleming? In, uh, this, um, this yeah, they get spring and summer. I'm going to be redoing my website, ChristopherFleming.com. It's on there now. You can probably still reach me from there. You got my social media. You can find me, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, there's a new series that they brought me in, Discovery brought me in to, to do that uh, is going to be airing. I can't tell you the title because it's kind of a surprise. Um, there's a big surprise attached to it. But it's going to be airing, Ooh. I believe, in April uh, in the UK. And then it's going to be here at Discovery Plus. So I'm excited about that. And oh, then you gotta come back. You got to come back. I'm working on a, uh, I'm now getting into developing and producing. I, I don't want to do, I mean, I'll make guest appearance. I'm going to be on portals to hell May 7th. It is uh where do we go? I don't, I don't even remember where we went cause they don't tell me, <laughs> but I'm on another episode of Par portals to hell. Um, right. and that was fun to work with Jack and Katrina. I love Katrina and Jack's great. Yeah. Um, fright club did a couple episodes, but, uh, I'm working on a documentary right now for shock doc that I'm developing that uh, needs to be done. So uh, hopefully I'll get that wrapped up and discuss with the network in the next month or two. Wow. Fantastic. Incredible. Yeah. You got to come back when uh, this all Thank starts you. going. We'd love to. Yeah. Have you. Want to hear about this. You, there were probably about <clears throat> seven more questions we couldn't even get to. And it just is so much to talk about. I wanted to get into dreams with you. Right. Um, and we'll do that at, at a future date. Uh, but well, here's yeah. the thing. I'll just add this is people can book with me. Um, Gen Books just got bought out yeah. by Booksy. And I have had a website now for 15, 16 years where people can book one on ones with me, whether it's face to face or over the phone. Also questions and answer sessions, that type of stuff. So just if you Google right now, Chris Fleming, Gen Book, G-E-N-B-O-O-K, it should show up on the very first page. You can book. I mean, I'm booked out right now for I think the next three weeks or so, but you can book some time with me, whether you want a reading, a spiritual consultation, questions and answers. Um, that's probably the best way to really converse me because I designate my 100% of my time with you during that time period. Or do like I do and just get his phone number. But Ken, <laughs> <laughs> Ken and I cannot thank you enough. Right. Yeah, it was a fantastic show. And, uh, uh, don't uh, don't hang up, Chris. Uh, we're okay. going to talk to you uh, post show here in a Thanks second. Thanks for having but, me, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, and thank all pleasure. of you for joining us this evening again. Monday Night Monsters tomorrow night. Uh, keep uh, checking out uh, Stranger. Uh, st oh God, extreme, God. extremely strange. Extremely strange. And I hope to meet I you, Satori and Cody, one day in the future. I'm sure we'll meet. Absolutely. Oh, make it happen. Well, thank you so much, Chris. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, for the thank rest you. of you guys, see you next week. You've been watching Dead Air Live on Dead Air Full Spectrum. We'll see you next week. Take care.